In statistics, a statistic is sufficient with respect to a statistical model and its associated unknown parameter if no other statistic that can be calculated from the same sample provides any additional information as to the value of the parameter. In particular, a statistic is sufficient for a family of probability distributions if the sample from which it is calculated gives no additional information than does the statistic as to which of those probability distributions is that of the population from which the sample was taken. Roughly, given the set of independent identically distributed data conditioned on an unknown parameter, a sufficient statistic is a function whose value contains all the information needed to compute any estimate of the parameter. Due to the factorization theorem for a sufficient statistic, the joint distribution can be written as from this factorization, it can easily be seen that the maximum likelihood estimate of will interact with only through. Typically, the sufficient statistic is a simple function of the data, e.g., the sum of all the data points. More generally, the unknown parameter may represent a vector of unknown quantities or may represent everything about the model that is unknown or not fully specified. In such a case, the sufficient statistic may be a set of functions, called a jointly sufficient statistic. Typically, there are as many functions as there are parameters. For example, for a Gaussian distribution with unknown mean and variance, the jointly sufficient statistic, from which maximum likelihood estimates of both parameters can be estimated, consists of two functions, the sum of all data points and the sum of all squared data points. The concept, due to Ronald Fisher, is equivalent to the statement that, conditional on the value of a sufficient statistic for a parameter, the joint probability distribution of the data does not depend on that parameter. Both the statistic and the underlying parameter can be vectors. A related concept is that of linear sufficiency, which is weaker than sufficiency but can be applied in some cases where there is no sufficient statistic. Although it is restricted to linear estimators, the Kolmogorov row of structural function deals with individual finite data. The related notion there is the algorithmic sufficient statistic. The concept of sufficiency has fallen out of favor in descriptive statistics because of the strong dependence on an assumption of the distributional form, but remains very important in theoretical work. Mathematical definition A statistic t is sufficient for underlying parameter theta precisely if the conditional probability distribution of the data x, given the statistic t, does not depend on the parameter theta, i.e., instead of this expression, the definition still holds if one uses either of the equivalent expressions or which indicate, respectively, that the conditional probability of the parameter theta, given the sufficient statistic t, does not depend on the data x, and that the conditional probability of the parameter theta given the sufficient statistic t and the conditional probability of the data x given the sufficient statistic t are statistically independent. Example as an example, the sample mean is sufficient for the mean of a normal distribution with known variance. Once the sample mean is known, no further information about mu can be obtained from the sample itself. On the other hand, for an arbitrary distribution the median is not sufficient for the mean. Even if the median of the sample is known, knowing the sample itself would provide further information about the population mean. For example, if the observations that are less than the median are only slightly less, but observations exceeding the median exceed it by a larger amount, then this would have a bearing on one's inference about the population mean. Fischer-Neyman Factorization Theorem Fisch's factorization theorem or factorization criterion provides a convenient characterization of a sufficient statistic. If the probability density function is f theta, then t is sufficient for theta if and only if non-negative functions g and h can be found such that i.e. The density f can be factored into a product such that one factor, h, does not depend on theta and the other factor, which does depend on theta, 
depends on x only through t. It is easy to see that if f is a one-to-one -one function and t is a sufficient statistic, then f is a sufficient statistic. In particular we can multiply a sufficient statistic by a non-zero constant and get another sufficient statistic. Likelihood principal interpretation and implication of the theorem is that when using likelihood-based inference, two sets of data yielding the same value for the sufficient statistic t will always yield the same inferences about theta. By the factorization criterion, the likelihood's dependence on theta is only in conjunction with t. As this is the same in both cases, the dependence on theta will be the same as well, leading to identical inferences. Proof due to Hogg and Craig. Let denote a random sample from a distribution having the PDF f for iota less than theta less than delta. Let y1 equals u1 be a statistic whose PDF is g1. Then y1 equals u1 is a sufficient statistic for theta if and only if, for some function h. First, suppose that we shall make the transformation y equals ui. For i equals 1, n, having inverse functions she equals y, for i equals 1, n, and Jacobian. Thus, the left-hand member is the joint PDF g of y1 equals u1, y n equals un. In the right-hand member, is the PDF of, so that is the quotient of n, that is, it is the conditional PDF of given. But, and thus, was given not to depend upon, since was not introduced in the transformation and accordingly not in the Jacobian. It follows that does not depend upon and that is a sufficient statistics for. The converse is proven by taking, where does not depend upon because depend only upon, which are independent on when conditioned by, a sufficient statistics by hypothesis. Now divide both members by the absolute value of the non-vanishing Jacobian, and replace by the functions in. This yields where is the Jacobian with replace by their value in terms. The left-hand member is necessarily the joint PDF of, since, and thus does not depend upon, then is a function that does not depend upon. Another proof a simpler more illustrative proof is as follows, although it applies only in the discrete case. We use the shorthand notation to denote the joint probability of by, since is a function of we have and thus, with the last equality being true by the definition of conditional probability distributions. Thus with then, reciprocally, if we have with the first equality by the definition of PDF for multiple variables, the second by the remark above, the third by hypothesis, and the fourth because the summation is not over. Thus, the conditional probability distribution is, with the first equality by definition of conditional probability density, the second by the remark above, the third by the equality proven above, and the fourth by simplification. This expression does not depend on and thus is a sufficient statistic. Minimal sufficiency. A sufficient statistic is minimal sufficient if it can be represented as a function of any other sufficient statistic. In other words, S is minimal sufficient if and only if S is sufficient, and if T is sufficient, then there exists a function F such that S equals F. Intuitively, a minimal sufficient statistic most efficiently captures all possible information about the parameter theta. A useful characterization of minimal sufficiency is that when the density f theta exists, s is minimal sufficient if and only if is independent of theta. s equals s. This follows as a direct consequence from Fish's factorization theorem stated above. A case in which there is no minimal sufficient statistic was shown by Behada, 1954. However, under mild conditions, a minimal sufficient statistic does always exist. In particular, in Euclidean space, these conditions always hold if the random variables are all discrete or are all continuous. If there exists a minimal sufficient statistic, and this is usually the case, then every complete sufficient statistic is necessarily minimal sufficient. While it is hard to find cases in which a minimal sufficient statistic does not exist, it is not so hard to find cases in which there is no complete statistic. The collection of likelihood ratios is a minimal sufficient statistic if is discrete or has a density function. Examples
Bernoulli distribution if x1, xn are independent Bernoulli distributed random variables with expected value p, then the sum t equals x1 plus plus xn is a sufficient statistic for p. This is seen by considering the joint probability distribution. Because the observations are independent, this can be written as m collecting powers of p in 1 minus p, gives which satisfies the factorization criterion, with h equals 1 being just a constant. Note the crucial feature. The unknown parameter p interacts with the data x only via the statistic t equals sigma xi. As a concrete application, this gives a procedure for creating a fair coin from a bias coin. Uniform distribution if x1, xn are independent and uniformly distributed on the interval 0, theta. Then t equals max is sufficient for theta. The sample maximum is a sufficient statistic for the population maximum. To see this, consider the joint probability density function of x equals. Because the observations are independent, the PDF can be written as a product of individual densities where 1 is the indicator function. Thus the density takes form required by the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem, where h equals 1, min, xi, 0, and the rest of the expression is a function of only theta and t equals max, xi. In fact, the minimum variance unbiased estimator for theta is this is the sample maximum, scaled to correct for the bias and is MVUE by the layman's Sheffe theorem. Unscaled sample maximum t is the maximum likelihood estimator for theta. Uniform distribution if are independent and uniformly distributed on the interval then is a two-dimensional sufficient statistic for. To see this, consider the joint probability density function of, because the observations are independent, the PDF can be written as a product of individual densities, i.e., the joint density of the sample takes the form required by the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem. By letting since does not depend on the parameter and depends only on through the function the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem implies is a sufficient statistic for Poisson distribution if x1, xn are independent and have a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda, then the sum t equals x1 plus plus xn is a sufficient statistic for lambda. To see this, consider the joint probability distribution. Because the observations are independent, this can be written as which may be written as which shows that the factorization criterion is satisfied, where h is the reciprocal of the product of the factorials. Note the parameter lambda interacts with the data only through its sum t. Normal distribution if are independent and normally distributed with expected value theta and known finite variance, then is a sufficient statistic for theta. To see this, consider the joint probability density function of, because the observations are independent, the PDF can be written as a product of individual densities, i.e., then, since, which can be shown simply by expanding this term, the joint density of the sample takes the form required by the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem. By letting since does not depend on the parameter and depends only on through the function the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem implies is a sufficient statistic for exponential distribution if are independent and exponentially distributed with expected value theta, then is a sufficient statistic for theta. To see this, consider the joint probability density function of, because the observations are independent, the PDF can be written as a product of individual densities, i.e., the joint density of the sample takes the form required by the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem. By letting since does not depend on the parameter and depends only on through the function the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem implies is a sufficient statistic for gamma distribution if are independent and distributed as a, where and are unknown parameters of a gamma distribution, then is a two-dimensional sufficient statistic for
To see this, consider the joint probability density function of, because the observations are independent, the PDF can be written as a product of individual densities, i.e., the joint density of the sample takes the form required by the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem. By letting since does not depend on the parameter and depends only on through the function the Fischer-Neyman factorization theorem implies is a sufficient statistic for Rao-Blackwell theorem. Sufficiency finds a useful application in the Rao-Blackwell theorem, which states that if g is any kind of estimator of theta, then typically the conditional expectation of g given sufficient statistic t is a better estimator of theta, and is never worse. Sometimes one can very easily construct a very crude estimator g, and then evaluate that conditional expected value to get an estimator that is in various senses optimal. Exponential family According to the pittman koopman darmois theorem, among families of probability distributions whose domain does not vary with the parameter being estimated, only in exponential families is there a sufficient statistic whose dimension remains bounded as sample size increases. Less tersely. Suppose independent identically distributed random variables whose distribution is known to be in some family of probability distributions. Only if that family is an exponential family is there a sufficient statistic whose number of scalar components does not increase as the sample size, n increases. This theorem shows that sufficiency sharply restricts the possible forms of the distribution. Other types of sufficiency Bayesian sufficiency An alternative formulation of the condition that a statistic be sufficient, set in a Bayesian context, involves the posterior distributions obtained by using the full data set and by using only a statistic. Thus the requirement is that, for almost every x, it turns out that this Bayesian sufficiency is a consequence of the formulation above. However they are not directly equivalent in the infinite dimensional case. A range of theoretical results for sufficiency in a Bayesian context is available. Linear sufficiency A concept called linear sufficiency can be formulated in a Bayesian context and more generally. First define the best linear predictor of a vector y based on x's. 